as we got into it, and the more times we visited Argentina, the more people we met in Argentina, the more files we discovered, um, the more newspaper reports we looked at from the time, it became pretty obvious that the death in the bunker was nothing but, well, fiction. Or maybe somebody died in the bunker, but it wasn't Adolf Hitler. Or is it that that's what a lot of people would have liked to have believed, and that's how they would have liked the history to be, to be written? And we remember how Hugh Trevor Roper was duped by the Hitler, by the Hitler Diaries. Diaries. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I have no idea why Hugh Trevor Roper was actually chosen by the secret services to do the death of Hitler. I mean, the guy was an Oxford academic. He, um, he had been listening to radio inserts all war, and yet they put him into Germany and Berlin to write the definitive intelligence report on the death of Hitler. Why they didn't put Scotland Yard in or some of the best detectives of our time, I don't know. However, I mean, there are other historians, Alan Bullock, of course, Hitler's biographer, and then uh, more recently, uh, Sir Ian Kershaw, who say, look, the, the evidence that, that Hitler committed suicide and then his body in Eva Braun's was, was burnt, either as a result of deliberate action or by shell fire, that the evidence is there. I mean, how, what weight of evidence have you got now to, to actually balance that argument? I think it's likely that somebody died in the bunker, but I don't think it was Hitler. We have the testimony from a Warsaw court of the pilot who flew them out, um, he went to court in 1947, gave details of who he'd flown out, where he'd flown from, and where he flew them to. The judge in Warsaw at the time thought, you really are joking, you have to be. So sent him away for psychological testing. Six months later, they brought him back into court. He said exactly the same thing. He was extremely detailed. We have the testimony from an SS officer on the ground in Denmark who saw the plane arrive and Hitler and Ava Brown get out with other passengers. Um, we have what I think is an overwhelming amount of evidence that shows that Adolf Hitler survived. Got to Argentina. Um, his daughter later joined them there. Now, there is the interesting fact, the daughter, and therefore you've got DNA evidence. Has that actually been pursued to try and provide some concrete evidence that might stand up in a criminal trial, for instance? I think, well, there can't be any criminal trial. I mean, Hitler was never even accused of anything. He was dead. Well, although he was the world's either. greatest criminal. I know, yeah, amazing, yeah, amazing, yeah. really. I think the two daughters are still alive. One was born in Argentina at the end of wow. 1945, and one was born in Germany, or possibly Italy, in 1938, and came out to join them later. Um, there are numerous reports that Ava Brown was pregnant in the bunker uh, before they left. To try and go after these people, or, or to go after the children of these people, and over 30,000 Nazis and fascists escaped to Latin America after the war. I don't know whether it's really our job or my job. It's the history, you know, the, the children's but, but sins. If, if the evidence was there, why haven't the Nazi hunters, Wiesenthal and, and, and <coughs> his like, actually gone down this trail before? I think that's... Because it, it's been so well hidden. That's a really good question. You have to remember that Argentina was pretty much a fascist dictatorship until well, the early yeah, 80s. Peron was supported, of course, by the Nazis. Well, we have evidence that is presented in the book that both Peron and Ava were Nazi spies from 1941 in the mm. pay of Abwehr, the military intelligence organisation of the Nazis. It's... I don't know why people didn't go after them. One, he was dead, so I suppose, you know, why bother? Um, and secondly, you know, it took almost 11 and a half years for the Americans to find bin Laden. And they knew he was alive, and they knew where he was. And, you know, it took them a long time to find him. And would the argument be that uh, even though he might be alive, it's more convenient for them to actually just establish the fact that he is dead? I think a deal was done in 1944, early 1945, to get Martin Bormann, Adolf Hitler and Gestapo and Muller out of Germany. And the deal was done with senior members of the American intelligence services and a very few industrialists who knew this was going on as well. To what, to get their hands on rocket technology and... and in part, in part, yes. But I also think that the Americans, or these Americans, saw the Cold War coming. And they thought that it may be very handy to have the Nazi leadership in place as a bulwark against the Soviet Union. Mm. Of course, when they found out what these murdering swine had done and the extent of the Holocaust... You couldn't work with them anymore. And therein lies my next question. Are you prepared for the furore that this is likely to encounter in terms of, of people <clears throat> saying that you are rewriting history, you're ignoring you know, the, the uh, Holocaust, that you are making um, this man into a hero, etc.? Et no, no. Well, one, the man isn't a hero. He dies demented, tormented and betrayed in Argentina. His wife has left him. Borman has dismissed him from history. Um, there is no Holocaust denial in this. These were the worst, most evil, murdering criminal gang in history. And the thing that makes me angry more than anything else is that so many of them were allowed to escape, including Adolf Hitler. Um, I've been a journalist a very long so, time. So looked that, at that, the that, information. That, that, can I just challenge it? So not uh, uh, escaped as a, as a matter of accident, but were allowed to escape? Were allowed so to escape. That's a different story altogether. Were allowed to escape with 
a huge amount of the money that they'd stolen and raped from Europe with yeah. incredible patents, with shares in companies. Uh, they set up almost 700 front companies overseas to when they left. You've talked about the, the evidence you looked at with the Americans. What about the Russians? Have you actually balanced that because, of course, they were the ones closest to actually getting to him? It's interesting. The BBC reporter that was embedded with the Russian forces, or the Soviet forces, actually arrived at the bunker, Thomas Cadet, who was a great reporter, Paris bureau chief mm. before the war. Um, Cadet, when he got there with the Russians, said they'd been handed six doubles of Hitler, and none of them were actually Hitler. And he says in his report, which was aired on the BBC at the time from a senior correspondent, that there was no proof at all that Adolf Hitler's body was found at the bunker. Stalin always said he'd escaped to Spain or Argentina, and it's now been proved that the skull fragment that the Russians hold, the FSB hold in it's Moscow, female. is female and 40, so it can't even be Ava Brown. Mm. And then people say, well, the jawbone has got to be Hitler's. Well, if it came from the same skull, how can it be?